This video features footage, background reviews, and grades for all the 1973 first round draft picks. The Rams traded their first round 1973 draft pick to the Patriots, so they partied until the second round. But Oilers fans were screaming for an impact defensive lineman, and the Oilers drafted one. A really big one. The Twos, John Matuzak. At 6 foot 8 inches, 275 pounds, was the first overall draft pick in the 1973 NFL Draft out of the University of Tampa. One year later, he'd signed with the Houston Texans of the World Football League, where he played exactly one game before he was served an injunction by the Oilers, and his services were returned to them. They traded him to the Chiefs with a third-round pick for defensive tackle Curly Culp, who ended up being a Hall of Famer, and he played seven seasons for them. The Oilers also received a 1975 first-round draft pick, which was used to select Hall of Fame linebacker Robert Brazil, who played 10 years for the Oilers. So, even though the Twos only had four sacks for the Oilers, his selection resulted in two Hall of Fame players playing for them over an extended period of time. My rating of A++ is the highest in this draft. With the second overall pick, the Colts selected quarterback Burt Jones out of LSU. He was the only quarterback taken in the first round. The Colts were able to nab Jones because of a great trade in which they sent defensive tackle Billy Newsom packing, along with a fourth-round pick for the New Orleans Saints' 1973 first-round pick. Jones played nine years for the Colts and was the NFL's 1976 MVP. Grade A. The Eagles made a great choice selecting tackle Jerry Sizemore out of Texas. He played 12 solid years in Philly his entire career and made two Pro Bowls. This is what a team hopes for, and they deserve an A for this fine selection. The Patriots receive an A+. Plus for picking Hall of Fame guard John Hogg Hanna out of the University of Alabama with the fourth selection. In 13 years with the Patriots, he made All-Pro seven times and nine Pro Bowl teams. Quite simply, he's one of the greatest offensive linemen of all time. I'm a big fan of John Hanna and offensive linemen in general because they do all the dirty work and seldom receive praise outside of the sidelines and film room. If you haven't already, please click the like and subscribe buttons. I appreciate it. With the fifth pick, the Cardinals selected 6'7", 290-pound defense alignment Dave Butts out of Purdue. He only started 11 games for them over two years, and in 1975 was granted free agency due to a mistake in his rookie contract. Redskins head coach and general manager George Allen quickly scooped in to sign him. But the NFL ruled that the Cardinals deserves compensation to the tune of a 1977 first-round pick and a first- and second-round pick in 1978. The Cardinals used the 1977 pick to get quarterback Steve Pisarkowicz. He started four games in two years for them and was a flop. They selected safety Ken Green in 1978's first round, and he intercepted five passes in five years. Strike two. Their 1978 second round pick was traded to Oakland. This is difficult to grade, and I'll give the Cardinals a C-. The Eagles drafted for the second time in the first six selections and got tight end Charlie Young out of USC. Right out of the gate, he was dynamite. In his first four years with Philly, he made three Pro Bowls, one first team All-Pro team, and two second team All-Pro squads. In 1977, he was traded to the Rams for quarterback Ron Jaworski, who would be their starting quarterback for 10 years and lead them to their first Super Bowl appearance in January 1981. Grade, another A for Philadelphia. 
Bill selected offensive tackle Paul Seymour out of Michigan with the seventh pick. He was six foot five inches, 252 pounds, and they converted him to tight end. He played five years with the Bills, caught 62 passes and three touchdowns and 68 starts, so basically he was a blocker. C. Plus. Defensive tackle Wally Chambers from Eastern Kentucky was the Bears' pick at number eight. He was the defensive rookie of the year, and in five years with the Bears, he made three Pro Bowls, second team All Pro twice, and first team All Pro once. Although he only started one game in 1977 due to a knee injury, it didn't deter the Buccaneers from trading their 1979 first-round pick and a player to be named later who would become tight end Bob Moore for Chambers. He only started two games in 1978 due to lingering knee problems, and after starting all 16 games in 1979, he retired. The player that the Bears drafted with the Buccaneers pick was Hall of Fame defensive lineman Dan Hampton. Grade A+. Running back Otis Armstrong out of Purdue was tagged with the ninth pick to take over for an aging Floyd Little at running back, and he was terrific. In 1974, he led the NFL in rushing yards. He had two 1,000-yard rushing seasons, made the Pro Bowl twice, and made first-team All-Pro once in his eight-year Bronco career. Broncos receive an A. Colts needed defensive help, so they selected defensive tackle Joe Ehrman from Syracuse. He had a solid eight-year stint with the Colts, and he started 108 games and collected 38 and a half sacks. I grade this pick a B. Running backs Jim Nance and Carl Garrett left town, so the Patriots selected Sam Bam Cunningham with the 11th pick out of USC. This battering running back played nine years for the Patriots, rushed and received 7,358 yards, and scored 49 touchdowns. The Patriots score an A-. minus. Vikings scored big time by drafting Chuck Foreman out of the University of Miami. He was the Offensive Rookie of the Year, a five-time Pro Bowl player, one-time first-team All-Pro, and had three consecutive 1,000 rushing yard seasons. He had 8,944 total yards and 75 touchdowns in 93 games for the Purple. This one's easy to grade. A. In 1973, the Jets needed help almost everywhere, and they decided to take safety Burgess Owens out of Miami with the 13th overall pick. In seven years with the Jets, he pilfered 21 passes in 91 games. I'm grading this a B. All of the picks so far have been pretty much panning out, but the Oilers' selection of running back George Amundsen out of Iowa State did not. In two years with the Oilers, he started five games, Rushed for 406 yards and four touchdowns. This pick was a total miss. So I grade this a D. Isaac Curtis, wide receiver out of San Diego State, was the Bengals' choice at number 15. And he did not disappoint. In 12 years with the team, he had 7,101 receiving yards. 
and 53 touchdowns. Three times he made second team all pro and he made the Pro Bowl each of his first four years in the league. The Bengals get an A. Browns were looking to add some aerial excitement for their fans, so they opted to take the draft pick that they received from the New York Giants and obtain the services of wide receiver Steve Holden from Arizona State. In four years with the Browns, he started 20 games, had 927 yards and four touchdowns. The Browns missed on this pick and receive a C-. The Browns weren't the only team to miss, as the Lions missed on selecting Ernest Price. Defensive end out of Texas A&I. In a little over five years, he had a total of nine sacks and 17 games started. The Lions also receive a C-minus grade. With the 18th pick, the 49ers selected Mike Holmes from Texas Southern. He spent the entire 1973 season on injured reserve. He intercepted three passes and recovered three fumbles as a free safety in 1974 then caught 16 passes for one touchdown in 1975. He only started 10 games for the 49ers, who didn't know what to do with him. Grade, D+. Side note, he's one of the few to play in the NFL, the Canadian Football League, with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers from 1977 through 1982, and the United States Football League, Washington Federals in 1983. Next comes the tragic tale of wide receiver Daryl Stingley out of Purdue, who was drafted 19th overall by the Patriots. The pick was obtained from the Lions through the Bears. He played five years, started 53 games, had 110 receptions, 39 in 1977, which was his last year, and 14 touchdowns. He was paralyzed due to a Jack Tatum hit in a 1978 preseason game. Due to his career being cut short, I am grading this pick as an incomplete. Cowboys desperately needed an upgrade at tight end and found it in Billy Joe Dupree from Michigan State. His 11-year career was spent entirely with the Cowboys, and in 131 games started, he made three Pro Bowls. Based upon that, in his 267 catches for 3,565 yards and 41 touchdowns, I give the Cowboys a well-deserved A. With the 23rd overall pick, the Packers were looking to grab a wide receiver who could make an exciting impact to their ground-and-pound dominated offensive dimension. Unfortunately, Barry Smith out of Florida State did not fail the bill. He played three years for the Pack, started 22 games, and only caught 45 passes for four touchdowns. This pick deserves a D-plus grade. Browns ended up receiving a bad break due to a knee injury suffered by Pete Adams, a guard out of USC whom they drafted 22nd overall. He did not play in 1973 nor 1975. In two years with the Browns that he did play, he started 22 games. I will not give a bad grade when injuries are contributing factors to lack of production, so I'm giving an incomplete. The Raiders absolutely shocked the pro football world when they selected punter Ray Guy with a 23rd overall pick. Incredibly athletic, it was reported that he could throw a football 70-plus yards. He kicked a then-record 61-yard field goal for Southern Miss 
and was the 1972 College All-Star Game Most Valuable Player in which the Miami Dolphins played in an All-Star team of college seniors. He set a single-season school record with eight interceptions as a safety, plus he struck out 266 batters in 200 innings pitched and pitched a no-hitter while playing baseball at Southern Miss. He was the first pure punter inducted into the Hall of Fame, so the Raiders get an A+. The Steelers nabbed defensive back J.T. Thomas from Florida State, and he played eight years with them, starting 88 games, intercepting 19 passes, and making one Pro Bowl team. He had a solid career, and I'll give the Steelers a B grade. With the 27th pick that was obtained from Washington through Baltimore, the Chargers selected Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Rogers out of Nebraska. He was a major dual-purpose threat, as in 1972 he rushed 73 times for 348 yards and 10 touchdowns with a 4.8 average, along with 58 catches for 1,013 yards, 9 touchdowns, and a 17.5 average. He was nicknamed Johnny R. Superstar. The Chargers offered him peanuts in comparison to the Canadian Football League's Montreal Alouettes three-year contract of $100,000 plus annually, so he took the money and ran. He was Rookie of the Year, a three-time All-Star, and 1974 Great Cup champion. In 1977, the Chargers offered a carload of cash, $925,000. He accepted and only started seven games, caught 17 balls for zero touchdowns. A freak knee injury sustained during a team practice ended his career. I will not give the Chargers an incomplete because they were too cheap initially when they failed to sign him. Essentially, this was a wasted draft pick and they paid dearly for it. Grade. F. The Dolphins had the last pick in the first round, but the NFL awarded it to the Bills on the basis of compensation for the Dolphins signing wide receiver Marlon the Magician Briscoe as a free agent. The Bills select a guard Joe Delamalier, and in seven years with the team, he made five Pro Bowls, three first-team All-Pro teams, and two second-team All-Pro designations. He made the Hall of Fame, and Buffalo made an A-plus grade with this selection. Purdue and USC were the schools with the most picks, three apiece, while tight end and wide receiver together had the most picks for any position with eight. There were three Hall of Famers drafted, with three other Hall of Famers non-directly resulting from this draft. Who is the player who played in the least number of NFL games? 1972 Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Rogers with only 17. So which team had the best draft? I think New England with John Hogg Hanna, Sam Bam Cunningham, and Daryl Stingley is very close to the Oilers since the Matuzak trade resulted in two Hall of Famers. Honorable mention goes to the Eagles too for getting A's with Jerry Sizemore and Charlie Young. <laughs> 